mind. That thought like, also popped Order in my 66, mind. he was there. He yeah. murdered all those kids in that one scene. Like, those were like her she's brothers using, and sisters, basically. She's using, so you think so, she's using Obi-Wan to get to him? Yeah. Like, he's like, if I get his life, trust, so maybe she didn't fully turn that. Like, the fact that she was willing to kill the Grand Inquisitor just to get Kenobi, that, that, that point was just like, okay, this girl's desperate. My to, question like, is, I don't think that, it's just about. I don't think it's just a matter of like I want a, a, a this promotion. I think it's just like I like I feel like she wants she wants to be the one to kill Vader, and the only way that she knows how to do that is with the dark side, you know. Mm, that, 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 that makes sense. Awesome. Yeah, and I'm wondering too because in Rebels, uh, the Grand Inquisitor is still there, so we don't know if maybe this Grand Inquisitor has a clone or <laughs> if he ain't species. dead. Th that's why uh, th I had that thought too, but then I'm starting to think to myself the fact that we don't know where, uh, yeah, uh, Kenobi is 10 years after uh, Revenge of the Sith. We're aware of that. And Rebels is definitely somewhere within that timeline too. So it doesn't really give me a sense. That's that's also another fault of uh, issue. Because he have. dies in Rebels. So, yeah, see, he, he yeah. yeah, the position, but then at the same time, it's never been revealed that there was another Grand Inquisitor after that Grand Inquisitor in Rebels as well. Maybe the Grand Inquisitor we see in Kenobi is the replacement from the one in Rebels. You know, that's the that's one thing I have an issue with. Like this, that that's why with the show, I'm only trying to focus on the timeline of the show, and then I'll worry about everything in canon later once it's wrapped yeah. up. But it is fun to to speculate, like since. Fifth brother also wants that seat of the Grand Inquisitor. Mm -hmm. Third sister is going for it too. It is. It, I like how we're getting so much of this drama within drama, and uh, we're talking so much on the on the whole House of the Inquisitors. I still like the whole thing with Obi Wan. Like after he rescues Leia, the whole Leia trying to trust him, and then they're on this planet, which. Even though I was not, even though I could not make it when you guys re re reviewed episode two. Kunel Kunel portrayal of his uh, character pretending to be a Jedi was fantastic, and I like how he represents a truly like a rogue, a scoundrel out there. He is doing some good things, but at the same time, he is still in it for himself. So once he gives them this coordinates to this planet, and Obi Wan throughout the entire time, he is questioning whether he's helping them or not. And Leia, of course, as a young girl, she is like, well, he is helping us, right? He got us off the planet. And I like from Obi-Wan, we're starting to see, we're, we're hearing from him, his, his past experiences. When he's talking about this mining planet, how it used to be full of fields, families. It was a mm. prosperous ecosystem. But then the Empire changed it to now it looks ravaged. Like every natural resource is being wasted. Yep. Mm -hmm. It kind of goes back over to Rogue One in a sense, where you wind up seeing farmers, you wind up seeing different uh, things going on within the fields itself, and now it's just gray and depressing. Yeah. yeah. So you, it's a little bit of a callback to Rogue One in a sense, but you know the the one thing that didn't really work out for me for this part was why whenever you wind up seeing the them catching a ride with the Empire with the stormtroopers. You see the alien, but I was expecting the alien to actually talk like an alien, not actually talk like a human being. Yeah. Oh, hey, so up? it kind of took me. So it took me out for a little bit. So I'm like, okay, different planet, different alien, different cultures. Okay, I can deal with that then. But it's just that that whole ride a little bit. It just took me out just a tiny bit. Zach you Graff know? doing his best Seth Rogen impression. Yeah, I thought that was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty but, crazy. I what I really what I think what I love the most about this episode and like the newer Star Wars things coming out in general is like how terrifying they're making Darth Vader. Because mm -hmm. I remember watching the original trilogy and you know my parents being like, "Oh, Darth Vader, he's a scary dude," and you know, I'm just like, "Yeah, yeah, he is okay." But like Rogue One definitely stepped it up. For me, with that hallway scene, but then this epi episode takes it a step further when he's just walking down the street, and Vader's just like, "All right, who's it? Who's within choking distance?" You yeah. <laughs> and just start when he Get kills that little boy. Yeah. Just I was like, Ooh. "Oh no!" Just snapped his neck. I'm like, mm -hmm. "They held did not held back. That should have been rated R for a it's sec." Like, killed young <laughs> before like, that. Just left that me. one woman a widow and 
childless. Like, dang, just ruined her life. Yeah. Uh, like, this dude is crazy. And then how he, like, lights the ground on fire and just throws Obi-Wan in it. I'm like, this dude is not playing. <laughs> no, he was... And to be honest with you, this is like a Star Wars uh, episode that's totally nightmare for... Uh, for Obi-Wan and stuff like that. He's now face to face with the monster that he so-called created. He didn't he doesn't know the implications of how dangerous he actually was up yeah. until he was face to face with him and that look of fear and dread. And then when you see him running away from him instead of fighting him like you would see uh him battle with anybody else, he just goes, "Okay, bye." And then yeah, we no. went up <laughs> <laughs> it's like us trying to avoid the final boss in a video game. It's like, I'm not ready for you yet. <laughs> I still need to level up. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Obi Wan running away reminded me of Fallen Order as Cal Kestis. Like, yeah. you may be a you may be trained, but you're not ready for for Vader just yet. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's crazy too because one of the things I thought about too was in the scene on the ride. What's really interesting is when Obi Wan starts talking about. Um, Leia's mother. Yeah. And of course, he's talking about it from the context that he's playing her father, but he's talking about all this stuff. And he starts crying and she's like, it's just a story, right? And then he kind of just looks at her and says, like, yep, just acting. You know, he's like, you, you, you knew my mother, didn't you? You knew, like, you know them. And he's all like, no, no, it's his father. You know, and of course, he can't tell her what he knows. You know, and so it's really interesting how that plays out. But then, yeah, when he starts getting that blaster out, because, you know, everybody knows those protocol droids, you shoot them in the eyes, they're done. So Obi-Wan is sitting there shooting with a bit, you know, deal. But it's been 10 years since he has worked and trained and physically fought with a saber. Yeah. That's true. And so yeah. you got to think about it. It's like you're dealing with a dude who literally, I remember, I loved when, um, they're putting the armor on at the very beginning and all the different armors coming through and all that stuff. And I'm literally in my head, I'm hearing the theme song for the old 90s Iron Man cartoon. <laughs> I am Darth Vader. <laughs> I am Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just going. And then, you know, I was like, yeah. And the fact that he could feel Vader coming, I think that's another thing too. It wasn't that yeah. he was scared... He was scared when he saw Vader. It was like he felt the presence of yes. Vader coming. And in fact, he tried to continue to reach out to Qui Gon Jinn because Yoda said, Yoda told him, I will train you in how to be able to communicate with him. But he still can't yet because I don't think he's at peace with himself. No, he's definitely not. He's still going through his PTSD stuff and things. It also feels like his connection has also been. Bro broken as well because yeah. even in the first episode he's tried to reach out but you seem like he's had nightmares because he's not over his guilt because he was never over yeah. his guilt and uh it definitely it's it, it, it's it's always a great reminder to show like with the jedi you you're able to be you're able to connect more with it if you're at one with yourself and mm -hmm. it shows that there's a lot to, and it's proven Obi Wan has so much turmoil within him that yeah. I I did love in that opening scene as we all talked about earlier in this episode with with the third one he's trying to reach out to Qui Gon and yet that and he just says Master be uh be with me he's coming and then of course like Obi uh, Ewan does some great he did great acting just by that feeling of the presence. And like he was taken out of like you seen the fear in his eyes but then the taken out of breath. I mean, if there was ever an inner monologue, it could be like, what the hell? What is his power? What am I feeling? Why am why can't I move? Wh why is like every ounce of energy just frozen? Like, and then hearing that breathing from far away, it's like, yeah. it can't be. It can't be. And then seeing him in that suit, like it was amazing. And I will even to go back on his conversation with Leia. We saw from the first episode, Leia. She may be a young kid, but she's very, uh, she's very sharp for her age. And her being able to pick up on Obi Wan describing her mother, I, I love that little in between with the 